fun things for me has been learning that the Amazons were real. That they're there real. Was, they're real. I, I love that so much because right. folks might just think it's Wonder Woman and Xena and that's all. And so this is the thing. <laughs> For a long time, the women who we, we th would think of, I'm going to say this wrong, and you can totally make fun of me, but that's fine. I want to say it's pronounced Saramushans. Um, their graves were originally classified as being that of a group of warrior men. It wasn't that we didn't know where, where the Amazons had lived. It wasn't that we didn't have evidence. It was that they decided that all of these bodies buried with these weapons in what was clearly elaborate funeral rites for warriors were men. That's why you think the Amazons are a myth, right? There's actually more than one category of Amazons, which the book gets into later. And so I thought it was really interesting to learn how many times throughout history women fought, especially because when we got to Valkyries, how many of you think that the Vikings set sail on ships full of men, that no women ever left? You, my friends, are wrong. They were called shield maidens, and they fought young women who didn't have property or who just wanted to, apparently, went out and they fought. And it's not that you have a reason to know that you're wrong, because for a long time, again, their bodies were labeled as belonging to men because they had weapons. That it was the entire reason they were assumed to be men was the weapons. There was no biological... There was no, there was, first of all, the anthropologists didn't even look at pelvises. Oh. And so for those of you who know anything about bones, <laughs> their pelvises gave it away, right? There's a slight difference in shape, right? What we used to call birthing hips in some, some communities and still do. <laughs> um, so these were bodies, lots of them, again, where she was armed. We, we found graves of women who clearly died in battle. Right? There's a, an image circulating, a recent find, a relatively recent find, where you can see in the reconstruction the axe or sword hit through the front of her face. Right? And it's gory, but also it tells you that women in the ancient world weren't actually sitting around. And even when they were quote unquote sitting around, those cave paintings we all hear about and, and saw pictures of, women painted those. Those, those early Venuses, those robust statues that look like a pregnant person's body, like it just seems the dimensions are very exaggerated. And you think, well, who looked like this? You know what that view looks like? When you look down yourself. If you look at them from above, right, that's the way your body would look to you, especially while you're pregnant. And so a lot of things that were assigned and that you probably grew up and that you learned K through 12 and maybe even in early college, depending upon where you went to school, um, where men's work were really a much more egalitarian society than we think. Yes, yes, hunter-gatherers. Fun fact, hunters needed gatherers to not starve, right? Sure, the meat was good, the protein was good, but you also needed other things to go with the meat and somebody had to dress it and somebody had to make sure that there was a way to cook it, and so forth, so on. My doctor keeps telling me about vegetables, and I'm just like, sure. A smoothie, <laughs> a smoothie, a, smoothie. a salad. <laughs> Listen, we're gonna, I'm gonna convert her. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this book dives into a place uh, where the folks that we're talking to are highly curious, uh, very smart middle schoolers. So we're talking to folks in this book who have a desire to know about the history of, of these women, of these warriors, of, of these, these underrepresented people. And I think that's, we're, we're all of these middle schoolers, right? Like we are, if we're cracking this book open, that means that we have a desire to learn more. Why was it important to you to start at that base and not at some place you know, more elementary, more rudimentary? Well, most kids read up, okay? So when we're talking about Lexile scores and all of these other things that your kid's teacher may say to you and you may be like, what does this mean because it's not what we did? Um, the reality is that except for very early readers, how many of you remember the beginning of the Harry Potter series, right? 
Do you remember the kids that were actually reading Harry Potter at first and how many of them were actually 10 or 11 years old and the book was supposed to be, the series is supposed to be for older children. I was not a person who read the books I was supposed to read after, I don't know, kindergarten, possibly not before. Um, and I don't know many kids who are readers who read at their expected grade level, right? I know a lot of kids, at least kids who love reading, nobody liked Dick and Jane. No one. <laughs> Dick and Jane didn't like Dick and Jane, right? <laughs> and so when you think back to, say, let's go with third grade. And I was an ill-raised, sneaky child, so I was trying to break into the Stephen King in third grade, right? <laughs> By fifth grade, everybody in my house had just given up. They were like, okay, I don't know what she's reading. I'm not gonna ask anymore. But think about a kid who's really curious, who really likes to read, and how long it takes them from the point where they like reading to the point where they start to jump ahead, right? And I know someone's gonna be like, but it's a graphic novel and it should be a regular book, and I'm gonna tell you that graphic novels are both informative and educational, and also, frankly, more fun to read. 